Opposition People's National Party is urging the Finance Minister of the JLP Administration to update members of Parliament and the public on the promised allocation that will be provided for assistance to those who have been affected during the weekend lockdowns. Julian Robinson, who is currently the spokesperson on finance, has mentioned that persons are quite eager to receive this financial assistance. It was while closing out the budget debate in Parliament that Dr. Nigel Clark announced that the government would be allocating $126 million to be disbursed to vulnerable Jamaicans amidst the weekend lockdowns. Each of the 63 constituencies will receive $2 million. Clark had mentioned that the money would be disbursed through the Constituency Development Fund on April 1st. According to Julian Robinson, however, the funds have not yet been forthcoming. He says that since the Minister of Finance made the announcement, their constituents have been inundating us with requests and have not received anything in this regard. The minister promised that the funds would be made available in time to facilitate assistance before the long Easter weekend lockdown. Nothing has come so far. Robinson is calling for the finance minister to update members of parliament and the public on the promised allocation that would be provided as a form of assistance for those individuals who have been affected by the weekend lockdown. St. Catherine police are reporting that Asians have been held during an operation. Police investigators are working with the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency along with the Ministry of Health and Wellness as they investigate how these foreigners arrived in the island. The police have reported that four Asians were arrested in Navahead, Port Moore, St. Catherine recently. The police have mentioned that they were picked up during an ongoing investigation. They mentioned that investigators are working with PICA and the Ministry of Health and Wellness in an effort to understand how the Asians arrived in the country. There is a major search that is ongoing in an effort to trace the location of a man that has been linked to the car of the missing teacher from Clarendon. It is believed that this man is an accomplice of the unidentified dangerous individual who lost his life as a result of a shelling incident with the police in Belfield District near Bellas Gate, St. Catherine on the afternoon of April 3rd. A joint police military operation started in Browns Hall on April 3rd as the security forces tried to launch a search for a man who escaped their efforts on April 3rd. The man is believed to be an accomplice of the unidentified dangerous individual who lost his life during a shelling incident in Belfield District near Bellas Gates and Catherine on April 3rd at 1.30 p.m. Both men were accosted after they were seen with the navy blue Toyota Wish motor car belonging to the missing Clarendon teacher, Miss Natalie Dawkins. According to the police, however, they are still seeking to locate one of the individuals. They said that these two dangerous individuals were trying to sell Miss Dawkins' car. The whereabouts of the missing teacher is still unknown. Yesterday, the police indicated that they have been following several leads into the disappearance of the teacher and are continuing a series of operations in an attempt to locate her. A man from St. James has been arrested and charged for attempting to cause harm to his girlfriend. He is 23-year-old Gavin Shaw of St. James. He's a sales rep. He's also called Junior and he is scheduled to appear in court in relation to the harm that he caused to the mother of his child with a dangerous tool. Shaw is currently from retirement. Montego Bay St. James has been charged with causing harm at common law with the use of a dangerous tool. The police reported that on the afternoon of Thursday, March 18th, the woman who they say had recently ended a dangerous relationship with Mr. Shaw visited Mr. Shaw's mother's home to drop off their child. It is further reported that while she was at that location, 
she was confronted by Mr. Shaw, who reportedly accused her of being promiscuous and refusing to return his calls. According to the police, Shaw then ran to the rear of the premises and returned with a dangerous tool, which he reportedly pointed at the young lady several times and made mention of attempts to take her life. The police also said that his relatives intervened, allowing the woman to escape without any hurt. The matter was reported to the police in St. James. Mr. Shaw was arrested on Friday, April 2 and charged following an interrogation session. His court date is still being finalized. Indonesians have had to deal with landslides and flash floods from torrential rains in the eastern regions. It took the life of 41 persons and displaced thousands. The country's disaster relief agency is reporting that more than two dozen other persons are still missing. Mud tumbled down from surrounding hills onto dozens of homes in Lamanel village shortly after midnight on Adonaral Island in East Nusa, Tengara province. Rescuers rescued 35 individuals and at least five who had received harm as a result of the disaster. Flash flooding took the life of at least six persons elsewhere. Relief efforts were hampered by power cuts, blocked roads, covered in thick mud and debris, as well as the remoteness of the area surrounded by choppy seas and high waves. Seasonal downpours cause frequent landslides and floods, taking the life of dozens of persons each year in Indonesia. A chain of 17,000 islands where millions of persons live in mountainous areas or near fertile floodplains. Asia's disaster agency lowered the toll late Sunday to 41 from the first number of 44 after the search and rescue team re-verified the information that was received after they collected the persons. At least 27 persons are still missing. Three persons were recovered after being swept away by floods in Oyang Bayang village where 40 houses were also destroyed. Hundreds of persons escaped submerged homes, some of which were carried off by the flood waters. In another village, Waburak, three persons lost their lives and seven remain missing when overnight rains caused rivers to burst their banks, sending muddy waters into large areas of East Flores district. Four persons were harmed and they are currently being treated at the health clinic. Hundreds of persons are still involved in the rescue efforts. At least six villages have been affected by flash floods and a landslide that cut five bridges on the island. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Let me know what you think about all of the matters that have been discussed in this session. Remember to remain vigilant and safe at all times. Take care.